What's up, everybody, and welcome to ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news. I'm Drew Bosley, like that's Scott Savage, and you can join us at InsideTheGame.ca, our YouTube channel, and Inside the Game official podcast services. Thanks to our friends at Fire Dom Network and all those beautiful TV streaming platforms around the globe. Roku, Amazon Prime, Samsung Plus, Jinx Esports TV, ESTV, and a whole lot more. Scott, we got a whole lot to talk about today, buddy. What's on today's show? Well, something you didn't see coming, I don't think. None of us did. Nope. Google has returned to gaming in a small way. Mario Kart Tour's content is coming to an end. There was a lot of it, let's keep in mind. Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition has been spotted, and Stalker 2 Development Studio faces another setback. Nice. Hey, our show just went live from this week from Inside the Game. We have some pretty cool stuff on that week's show. Double Dragon, some VR content with Firewall Ultra, and Scott dove into the world of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So make sure you check that out this week. And uh, next week's another banger. Man, we got so many games coming in. Things are hot. Scott, just like today's show. Let's get going. Scott, uh, man, sometimes you just get an article and you go, oh, let's see what happens here. As no one say the S word. Google's trying out gaming again. <laughs> Dude, here oh comes. Oh, boy. Rich Stanton over a PC gamer. Google has begun public testing on YouTube's move into gaming, which follows years of the video platform branching out into adjacent sectors like music, TV, and podcasts. The games, under the banner of Playables, are now available to a limited number of YouTuber, YouTube users. And if you're in, then you should see the new section on the home page the announcement came via youtube's test features and experiments page thanks to nine to five google which allows premium accounts to opt in to test potential new elements of the site the playable section was first reported on last year when it was apparently being tested internally and no doubt employees were given strict instructions never to utter the name stadia scott <laughs> are you concerned at all we saw stadia come out die and now we're getting into gaming once again. What kind of games do you anticipate getting? You even care at this point to even get into this? You, dude, they had a gaming play platform. Why are they doing this now? Obviously, it didn't work on Stadia. You think you're gonna revitalize it here now? Yeah, <clears throat> I haven't seen anything about uh, pricing. Although I suppose if it's a premium account with YouTube, that does have a price of cost uh, associated with it. But sure. I don't know how that stacks in comparison to Stadia. <clears throat> because that stadia seemed to just be the better service from what i've seen but of course like you say it did fail so i wonder if this is kind of a low risk yeah. low investment way of trying to cultivate the same idea but what kind of games are we going to get on here now that's that becomes the question i think of it as netflix uh, yeah. what kind of things well, can you really host on netflix do you need a controller to attach to this well, is it keyboard based only there's a lot of questions i have that i'm not certain we know well, anything about yet dude how do you watch i watch netflix on a my tv through my xbox sometimes or on my phone right that so then are we getting into when you take a look at netflix they got into gaming dude you can play on mobile right like you can use your phone in order to play some of these games now granted netflix is looking to expand they're buying up studios here's the problem google hasn't bought anybody they let them all go so that's your problem right the problem back in Stadia, and I will say Stadia because I love Stadia, <clears throat> and they <throat> screwed that service up so bad because they didn't have any internal studios from the get-go. You launch a company that's going to get into gaming called Stadia, this whole platform, and you don't have it in your own internal studios, there's your issue, right? We take a look at the fight right now, the struggle with Xbox trying to overcome PlayStation and Nintendo. Phil Spencer's words, not mine, third place, right? Mm -hmm. How do they do that? How do they climb to the top? Dude, there's one game everybody's talking about right now. It's called Starfield. Why? Because Starfield is exclusive. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Stadia had nothing. They had one or two small games that were exclusive, weren't juggernaut titles, and they had no internal studios. Uh, Microsoft? What are they up to? 30-some-odd first-party studios? <clears throat> PlayStation's around the same vein. Nintendo have all their first-party studios. Stadia, Google, YouTube, nobody. There's an issue. No. Dude, this thing's just going to die again. I'm not even, like, this doesn't, it's not even tempting. As a gamer, after what they <laughs> did to me with Stadia, dude, I'm out. I can understand that. I still use the controller here and there. Oh, I really love the controller. A lot of, 
It is a good piece of hardware. That's the problem is that this the idea behind Stadia was so solid that it just was not supported. We had was that Tequila Works that put together Guilt. Yeah. Um, that was an exclusive. The other exclusive I can think of is uh, Hello Engineer. Um, yeah. But that was, uh, that was a very negative experience on my part. Or, Mine too. I did not enjoy that incredibly, but <clears throat> without the support behind it, what happened to Amy Heading? Uh, well, Amy was over with EA. She's now with Skybound. You're thinking of Jade Raymond. Jade Raymond right. came in. She was supposed to lead the charge. Dude, that was one studio for Google Stadia. Like that was that's yeah. the issue, right? One studio isn't going to be able to carry that whole platform. You need teams upon teams upon other studios to get in there. Craft experiences only found on Stadia, or in this case, only found on YouTube. And I really just kind of question what their idea is behind this, and if this is wor- going to work. As a Stadia fan in the past. Dude, what they've done to us over at Stadia fans doesn't really go well leading into this new sector of YouTube gaming that I'm going to try to... Dude, I'm not, I don't even want... Man, they better come out swinging, Scott, is what <laughs> I got to say. Right? They, they got to have something to, to prove to fans why they we should trust them once again. How many times have we seen Google come out or YouTube come out and try something and just let it die? Right? And granted, no. rest in peace my PlayStation Vita over at Sony, but I'm also warranted by all the PlayStations I've had in the past psvr psvr 2 right Mm -hmm. certain things are still going playstation is a solid foundation youtube not really known for its gaming quality isn't really all that you know high on my radar when it comes to trusting them to get into the gaming sphere are they gonna get mobile experiences dude it's working with netflix but (laughs) again we're seeing netflix grow and expand bring in more studios and then expand that to just outside of netflix dude they're gonna bring that you can get oxen free too on other platforms not just netflix i'm thinking if i had a premium account with youtube i would be very curious to try this out but because of what happened with stadia i would not buy a year's worth that's for certain (laughs) no i'm out man they better yeah i i'm gonna wait and see let's do that i'll wait and see and if something piques my interest maybe just maybe <laughs> I would jump in to take a look to see how well it works, if it works, how it works, and so forth. Let us know over on Twitter, the official ITG, YouTube Gaming, once again. Are you nervous? I know we are. It's gone after four years. Nintendo is ending the Mario Kart Tour. Well, about time. Andy Robinson <laughs> over at VGC. Dude, I'm a little wired up today. In a message sent to players, the companies confirmed that after the game's new tour of content, the anniversary tour starting on September 20th, all future seasons will consist of content from tours that have appeared before. Quote, no new courses, drivers, carts, or gliders will be added following the battle tour starting on the... Dude, why do they got to do that? Why wouldn't they just fix that for me? Man? Now I got to use my brain to actually do math. Yeah, I'm is that April? <laughs> it looks like it, right? April 10th. Ah, oh, man, oh, man. <clears throat> Whatever. The message reads, we hope you continue to enjoy playing Mario Kart Tour. The news potentially hints at an imminent release of the Nintendo Switch titled Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's sixth and final DLC wave since it was often shared new courses released to the mobile title. The Mario Kart Tour represents another hint at Mario or Nintendo's lessening focus on mobile games. Here we go. Scott, are we getting into the final wave now of the life cycle for the Switch? Are we going to get into the Switch 2? And now are we going to get a brand new Mario Kart game? A brand new Mario Kart 8. <laughs> brought uh, to another 8.2. Yeah, well, there's, I think they're hitting an end with Mario Kart because surely by now they must be running out of tracks to add given there's eight mario kart games but there's so only so many levels i'm surprised they haven't hit the end long ago who do you think still playing <clears throat> like i bounced off a long time ago when they said yeah we're gonna bring you all the old tracks i'm like that's great for those who are falling in love man i'm so far away from nintendo now it's not even funny the fact that yeah. they don't bring over a new mario kart which is really what everybody wanted not the old tracks poured it over everybody wants new mario kart right but i think they're holding off before we get into the new Switch, which sounds like we're getting possibly next year. Yeah, that does make sense. Nintendo likes to do um, one 
entry from their main line to each console generation. So that's why we've been de- dealing with Mario Kart 8 for so long. Yeah. So I really want them to move forward because I remember when I first put the game in, there's a new Zelda inspired track. Mm-hmm. What? Animal Crossing track. I thought these were really cool ideas because a lot of these things, they haven't seen creativity, not in a decade. Yeah. It's interesting to see why wouldn't they put out two? One at the beginning of the life cycle, maybe one near the mid to end of the life cycle. Do you think Nintendo didn't expect the Nintendo Switch to last this long in production? Oh, I don't know if anybody expected it to last <laughs> this long. I know I didn't. I really thought because they came out of the gate, like we talked in the past, right? They already came out behind, but it clearly hasn't mattered to Nintendo and it's worked really well in their favor to just keep doing what they do. And I'm definitely curious to see what the Switch 2 lines up to be. How different does that device look? feel and run compared to what we're already on right is it going to be competitive with today's standards of the current gen with the xbox series x and s and the playstation 5 are they going to get caught up are they going to go ahead scott do you think they'll? i don't think they're going to go ahead but do you think they'll be beating out the power horses of what we're dealing with today i don't think um you can fit that into a handheld device that's going to be the biggest setback i think how do you keep that thing portable because i think that's the future of nintendo now if they go for a console that wasn't a Switch, we'll say, then I would expect them to swing above. But otherwise, I just don't see it happening. Is the Switch to a streaming platform only? Oh, that's the future. Right? But are we there yet? Uh, I think the technology everybody. isn't quite there yet, no. Yeah. I think that's maybe another generation away. I wonder if that's how they get the power caught up, right? Is by going to the streaming side of it. If they're able to then not worry about having this set box but just stream from the cloud service instead. Maybe that's the functionality that allows them to get caught up, and not have to worry about producing this box each and every time that they want to sell another model. Curious to see where it goes, but hopefully with that new switch becomes a new Mario Kart. Everybody's been hankering for a new one at this point, right? Even I'm looking forward to having a new, what does a new Mario Kart experience look like? How do they change that? Nintendo has a craft and a charm to all of their games. It's what they do, right? It's what they're known for. And everybody just wants that new, new, new. And again, it's kind of like getting into GTA 5, getting into GTA Online. At this point, we just want the next one. Scott, one series I absolutely adore is the Horizon Forbidden West. Complete edition has been spotted by a rating board. This is Jordan Midler over at VGC. The listing which is still currently live on the Singapore ratings board, the IMDA, lists the game as, quote, Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition, end quote. Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition is a compilation containing the original adventure game Horizon Forbidden West and Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores expansion, reads the classification. Scott, the Complete Edition is just really packing in the DLC. That's all that is. Yeah. Uh, At first, I thought this included um, Zero Dawn, but that is not the case. This is just the game. So it's more of a Game of the Year edition. Yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah. Why wouldn't they pack it all together? Oh, and it seems like it's quite late into the life cycle of that game to announce a Game of the Year edition. So let me see. Burning Shores came out last year, right? I'm trying to line up where we are now with this game overall throughout the years at this point forbidden west launched two years ago we got burning shores last year we're still too far away to get into three then we hear rumors of a horizon kind of monster hunter world experience game coming around the corner which apparently is just co-op which i would like to see an introduction of maybe three people I know it's not your whatever, Scott, oh. but I would like at least a third to be in there. It'd be fun doing co-op, but I think if you add more people in it, I think that is kind of a better experience, at least in my eyes. But a compilation, a comp- uh, complete edition here for the Horizon Forbidden West is an interesting take. If you don't have Burning Shores, dude, I've already played both games, right? Like Burning Shores essentially is its own game. It's a DLC for Forbidden West. Dude, I, I adored both it was fantastic Aloy's story is an absolutely incredible journey it's got its ups and it's got its downs but you can't tell me one dude you can't list a game that doesn't have everything like it doesn't have ups and downs every game is not perfect 
there isn't a game out there that is so solid and so complete that you're like, this is an absolute, nothing wrong with it. And that's just not possible. Not even Starfield? No, oh, don't even give me, oh, dude. <laughs> and, and, you know, we talk about it, when we said it too, like Bethesda has to fix the Bethesda jank. And here we go again, brand new game, still get the Bethesda jank. It is just littered throughout that entire game. I get the sheer scope of the game and I grant, you know, how I over, I'm overjoyed with how big it is and the opportunities and things that present itself, but it's still still some of the most basic stuff, dude, getting caught behind a door. Like, <laughs> you know, why is that a thing? Like, it's Bethesda, Bethesda, I tell you. But I absolutely, dude, it's the most, it's the most played hours I have into any game this year alone. And I am not stopping. I, I still, when I'm on to other projects, I'm still thinking about Starfield. But either way, <laughs> dude, let's rope it back into Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy to divert you off of the Starfield ah. land. But... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But Burning Shores is coming with Forbidden West. And, dude, that's a lot of game. Like, Forbidden West is huge. There's a lot to get into. There's a lot of story characters to dive into. I do remember experiencing a bug in Forbidden West, which was preventing me from actually... Oh, I remember that, too, oh, yeah. Dude, I was so frustrated not being able to get it. But then they eventually fixed it, and I was able to get that quest done and move on. But, yo, I love that world. That world of, they took Zero Dawn, I thought, and then Gorilla being the studio behind it, and then jumped into Forbidden West and elevated everything, which then goes into Burning Shores, which is its own island. It kind of reminds me of Sucker Punch a little bit, how they had Ghost of Tsushima, and then they went to oh. Ikenai Island, right? You had Iki Island, I think it was called, which had its I own. Think it was Iki, yeah. Yeah, which had its own DLC, or its own location, and you go venture up to there. That's what Burning Shores did, too. But it also gave you access to go back to the other main base game if you wanted to complete other quests, trophies, and all that kind of good stuff. Dude, fantastic. Um, this is I'm cool. I'm wondering, does this mean that there is this two T's in advance for another project coming in the world of Horizon? Is this something that yeah, a couple months later we get the news of a third game, a prequel perhaps? I'm not up with the story, so don't spoil anything here, but... I imagine there's still much more room in that universe to create a game or cross media, maybe. Oh, well, after Burning Shores, there is no sequel. Aloy died at the end, so I'm just. Oh. I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, can you imagine? <laughs> this is like when I spoiled The Last of Us for you. <laughs> oh, man, that would hurt too. Um, no, we'll be getting a third, right? The, the way everything lines up in the end of, of Forbidden West, not even Burning Shores, but Forbidden West it indicates that there is another one coming. There is a trilogy planned here, is what we can see. And then a spin-off of this Monster Hunter experience as well. So there's a lot more. They're doubling down on Aloy. And not even necessarily Aloy herself, or Aloy, sorry, but just the Horizon game world and opportunities. I don't think that's... I think Horizon and Gorilla has crafted something that Sony doesn't want to let go, right? It's kind of like The Last of Us. We're going to get more of The Last of Us. By the way, where is the multiplayer at this point? Yeah, now I'm wondering, where's the Horizon multiplayer? Dude, side tangent so, so galore today, <laughs> I tell you. But it is one of those... PlayStation found a footing here. I think mean, Gorilla as a studio coming off of Kill Zone is like, what are they going to do? Kill Zone did okay, right? They didn't do banger numbers. It wasn't doing... It wasn't rising above Call of Duty, and I don't think it ever will. No. And I think they're looking for that competitive edge in the first person shooter area they couldn't do it but then they found something here with aloy in the horizon well, i'm gonna call it call it now as a franchise moving forward and everybody's all over it dude fo i've still seen photo mode pictures posted all the time oh wow loving it absolutely love it it's fantastic dude that game from the first one Granted, I loved and adored, but then getting into Forbidden West took that whole game to another level for me. And the story, and the way it unfolds, and everything else, and the characters you meet along the way, and your journey is incredible. Burning Shores, smaller patch of DLC, still a lengthy story. Steve and I absolutely loved it. We actually gave it a 10 on the show. And mm. then we're just kind of waiting, and waiting now, and waiting. So if you haven't played it, yo, you can get both of them for some reason if you haven't played it. But you'll be able to get oh, them both here soon. That that does make me think maybe it'll go to PC soon. Oh, hopeful, hopeful, Scott. Guess time will tell, PC dork. <laughs> Ooh.
Scott, some teams just can never catch a break. And Stalker 2 developer GSC Game World suffers an office fire. This is Sophie McGeeboy over at BG247. A fire has destroyed part of Stalker 2 developer GSC Game World's office in Prague. Man, as reported by Czech site Vortex, translated by Hazador Gaming on X, formerly known as Twitter, Musk. One floor has been destroyed due to an electrical installation fire. No injuries are, have been reported, but damage is estimated around $65,000. According to the outlet, the fire took out a floor containing backup services, servers. One of the GSC Game World developers provided an update on Discord, saying that the floor requires a full restoration and clarification that further details of the accident are still being investigated. Scott, <laughs> dude, they just can't catch a break, can they? No, no, they've already left their home nation to set up this kind of secondary yeah. ability to create something, and they still can't seem to catch a break. It's unreal. And this sort of fire damage is not going to be fixed overnight either. Having no. to do a whole restoration on a whole floor of a building, that's a lot of construction. Absolutely. This is a lot of construction. This is a massive hit to the studio once again. They say they're not going to slow down and what their final goal is, which is great to hear, right? They've they said they've experienced worse in the past. I'm like, it's like, man, oh. how much more can you guys endure? Because this is just ridiculous. Cyber attacks. The Ukraine whole fiasco going over there right now that they've actually had to pick up the studio, and relocate. This is a heartbreaking tale in itself. And now a fire hits the studio. Man, de like determined or what, Scott? You know, hats off to them to keep going and want to get this, see it through to the end. Soccer 2 eventually will come, but now with more damage, how much further is this out now, right? Like, this is uncontrollable. We see delays all the time hit games, and studios are like, no, nah, we're just not ready yet. we got to polish it up. Uh, we don't hear about our studios on fire. No, you know, literally in a war zone first. Yeah, this is heartbreaking. So hopefully they're able to get back on their feet sooner than later. But like you say, dude, the whole floor got wiped, right? So this is going to take some time. So just bear in mind, yo, the team is suffering more than the usual, and I'm still just yeah. shocked that they're able to just kind of Keep their head up, hold it up high, and just keep on trucking through. Just fantastic. I think it's good on them to do this because at the end of the day, dude, they have so many fans who are waiting on Stalker 2. I think that's yeah, kind we, of the drive for them, right? So positive thoughts. We to all that, want dude. we all want to enjoy Stalker 2, but this is a case of it's much more important that these developers enjoy Stalker 2 right now. Absolutely. Scott, dude, we haven't seen this in a while. It's a bit of a lighthearted day in the gaming world. What? game do we have out today we have hama a detective noir story on pc and i hope i pronounced that right fair enough my case the bone has chosen they found nazi artifacts in there but nobody talks about it i've been searching for answers for months but here i am i'm back well, that'll wrap up today's show, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. This has been ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest gaming news each and every day. We'll be back again tomorrow. There's always something to talk about. I'm Drew. That's Scott. And we'll see you inside the game.